Well, the company is your SSO, your SSO software, and um, basically the game we're working on is Pong 6D, which is basically Pong with six degrees of freedom. We think gamers are going to be really excited about it. With the original Pong, if you played it, it was uh, it just kind of went up and down, and um, and that's kind of two degrees of freedom. And then the um, the ball went back and forth, which you know, like depending on how you look at it, we we just go, went ahead and figured that was another two degrees of freedom. So that's four degrees of freedom. And what, what we're adding is another two degrees of freedom. We're, we aren't quite sure right now whether that's going to be able to move the paddle towards the center of the screen or whether it's going to be that the ball actually doesn't just move back and forth but actually goes up into the air, kind of comes out in 3D. That's probably where we're going to go if we think systems can handle it. It's just kind of the, the ball comes out in 3D. So that's this way too, so that's, that's the sixth. Although we started coding this on Amiga, um, obviously our target platform is N64 and then Katana. Although we believe that some slight modifications maybe you have to make to, to code to make it work on these machines because they are completely different. <laughs> well thus far there really haven't been any competitors to Pong 6D. I mean if you take any object, you know, here a mouse, this is 3D. Now 6D, I, I can't even illustrate it to you. It's fun. <laughs> it's a game that we really think gamers are just going to really take to. They're going to just want to game all day long. Game, game, game. I mean, it's, it's it, going gonna, it's gonna to be a It's going to revolutionize it's gonna the industry. Rock. It takes a lot of artists to do a game, you know, this, this caliber. We have um, two guys working on the intro sequence, uh, four guys working on the rendered cutscenes, two guys working on the user interface screen, so that's eight, and then we have one person who's actually working on, um, like, I guess the, for lack of a better term, the in-game art, um, and then we have two programmers, and they're, they're pretty hardcore programmers, um, both of them have done, uh, done games before, but the whole team is hardcore, everybody plays games, um, you know, some guys even play on their lunch hour, um, it's, it's pretty wacky, uh, but they play, uh, Doom is is some of them play Doom and and uh, a couple play Mist and uh, okay. you know, everyone plays Solitaire. It seems like that's the most popular game in the office. Everyone's got that on their machine. I don't know how they get it, but uh, I wouldn't mind being the company that's distributing that. But uh, and that's basically the makeup of the team. And then of course there's the producers and project managers. Um, there's we try to keep it close to a one to one ratio as possible, but we actually do have a couple more artists and we have project managers. So like I said, there's um nine artists and two programmers, so that's 11 people sort of on the tech side, and then we have um, 10 producers or product managers. Many people who are coding on PlayStation and Saturn and machines like that like to do polygons, but we decided better than polygons would be to fake polygons using sprites. Um, we take four polygons, uh, remove all the three-dimensional attributes, replace them with sprites, and bring the sprites back together into a cube, and then we simply assimilate millions and millions of these sprite cubes until they have a 3D appearance. This is uh, more efficient on uh, our processing uh, ability and um, it's uh, also I don't know how to do polygons. But oui, oui, uh, je m'appelle de Blake. Um, I think uh, uh, pork, if you um, look at the art direction on the original Pong, you know, um, you see several important things. The very important uh, thing. Uh, and these I things are like such things like, young when we originally developed the game, we decided, you know, we want to make, you know, a game like tennis, you know, from a, but from above, you know, so we have swinging rackets, you know, and net, etc. But um, then what we discover is that, um, you know, maybe swinging racket no looks so good, so we just make the racket just kind of like a white, bar, you know, just sort of sort up of and down, and then um, what we do then is we uh, oh, make it so that when the player moves, uh, that the... Understand. Pong 60 is really the first game that's for every age demographic. We've been running focus testing uh, mostly in geriatric homes, and what the elderly people really love is Pong. I mean, they can only focus on one object at a time, and usually with the paddles we give them, you know, their dexterity is pretty bad. Yeah, well, I think if you, if you go back and you look at the, the great classics, you know, there's two that really stand out. There's Pong, which was kind of the original Atari game. Um, we have a problem. I can't find the code for the paddle. <laughs> uh, this is Tom Russo. Uh, he's uh, 
He's one of the project managers on the game. He's project assistant associate lead project manager. Um, and I guess, uh, well, you're seeing uh, real game development as it happens. Uh, apparently, uh, the what? Pong kernel, as it's called, is, is missing. But I'm sure it's on a server someplace. We have, like, this NT um, machine that we use as a server. It's totally sweet. Like, um, there's a way with it that you can uh, actually network and play, like, two people playing games at the same time. Um, we're missing the ball code, too. <laughs> In my experience with the new machines and the development systems thereof, I have noticed that there's an amazing missing part of their graphics and code library, which is no Amiga support. One would think that when they were creating these amazing new machines that they would have included complete Amiga support, but they did not. So, I have the PlayStation emulating the Amiga, which is far more efficient in terms of code, yet again. However, it may not look as fast as it did on the Amiga in the first place, but this is purely the fault of Sony and also of Nintendo, and not me. Okay, basically the the loading game, uh, which uh, you know we've been searching the market for uh, for games like that, and one that comes to mind is Fantastic Four for the PlayStation, which uh, if you remember right, the actual the racing game was better than the actual you know Fantastic Four game. So we want to take that whole thing to a new level. What we're designing is basically an FMV game. Um, it's a uh, it's a rail shooter. You're, you're in a mine car, and catch this, you're underwater. One of the things that we're actually toying with now, um, there's still some time left in the project. We may put it in, we may we may not. Is uh, and it would be pretty tough technologically, but like I said, our our guys are pretty good. Is um, using the actual code that allows the first player using a joystick or a paddle device to move the the paddle up and down the screen. Uh, using that code, and if if a gamer has a second control device. Now, not many do, but, you know, it's kind of a nice bullet point to have on the box. If they have a second control device, a second player, or the first player, if he uses one hand for one and one hand for the other, could actually control the, the other paddle. So you could sort of have two people playing against each other. And um, I'm not sure if we're going to add that, but it would be nice, you know. It's a, it's a gamer's game. Gamers, up till now, it, there's been Final Fantasy VII, there's been Tomb Raider, but Pong 6D is just going to take gaming to a new level. A new level. I mean, I'm expecting fourth quarter sales to be phenomenal. 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 Um, we also want to, we we're going to be in the top ten. I mean, our goal, we want to be number one. I, 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 I can feel it. I, I almost... I think we'll be there. And our team's been working really hard to, to really put the finishing touches on this game and to um, really release it with a bang, major bang. We have announced that we're partnering with a technology partner on, uh, on Pong 60. Um, we haven't announced who that is, and uh, I don't think we're prepared to announce that right now. But uh, let me just say that, that when we do, I think that gamers will be impressed. It's, uh, it's definitely an engine with, uh, with a good pedigree, eh, no names. Wolfenstein 3D, um, but we'll just we'll just let that for gamers to figure out. We did look at using the Wolfenstein engine in this game, but unfortunately, using our Amiga emulation system, we could only make it run backwards, which made the game feel as if you were falling through Nazi Germany at high speed. It's very distressing, and is also banned in Germany. No game can feature Nazis or falling, because falling is violent. It's violent gravity. We have a pretty limited budget as far as um, marketing goes for Pong 60. We really feel like the game is going to sell itself. Um, at this point, we've put all our money into the launch party. And we were looking at Falco, but since he just passed away, uh, I got this tape a couple of weeks ago. And luckily, I, I don't know how they fit into their schedule, but we've secured the fat boys to play at our launch party. This is basically how we um, came up with some of the ideas behind like Pong. But what I think is really important about Pong is that it's a very beautiful game. You know, when, when, you, when you look at Pong, you know, you, you were looking at tennis, you know, and then one of, you know, the, and that is maybe the most important thing about the game is its beauty and its inner, you know, sort of Frenchness. Um, my friend Alexei Pajitnov, the creator of Tetris, said it best when he said that he had no clue why Tetris was so good. Um, we also have no clue in the same way that Alexei Pajitnov was clueless. And this purity of thought will lead to our Pong being perhaps the greatest bat simulation of all times 